G'day, welcome back to my string challenge in Flycorp as we continue around the world in one single chain. So today we are working further into Africa, starting with Cameroon. And like always with my new ones, I will just upgrade him and I won't connect him just yet. Now, One suggestion uh, that was made was what I could do to get rid of, say, these flights here, and some of these flights here, would be to connect this guy here, so the Falkland Islands, up, or, I mean, uh, Peter, who suggested this, suggested that I connect them straight to the... Uh, the remote cities in the Caribbean which would be these two but obviously I can't go straight up but what you could possibly do is try and hit a few cities that just sort of crop out a little bit in South America and then bounce up hit them and then jump over and hit these now it's an interesting theory because what you could do with that is all of these long routes become incredibly longer but the amount of load on them is going to be incredibly small. The only people that would be flying on them would be the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cities worth of people who are attempting to get there. So, would it work? I think in theory, yes. I think it's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> thing to try. Um, but we won't set it up yet. If we set it up, I think we will uh, just try and survive with those longer routes in the middle of our, our setups. These routes as it stands, those two, that guy, and these ones down here, I think one thing I can point out is that they don't have five planes on them. And we could put, so it means that we could put more planes onto what they've currently got. They're not fully overloaded um, whereas this guy is so this is our maximum anything that we can do whereas these guys we can still go up it's probably the one motivator that we we don't need to do this because they shouldn't really be backlogging too bad I mean that guy definitely is and he's going Mexico side so we can give him another push up look at where our four planes are on this one and you see three it's just to me that one of these guys is uh who these guys are sitting on top of each other so that's the wait i've got to start from the front so there's one guy there that guy's the one that in the base and that's the other one so let's sell one of those guys then upgrade him then we'll buy another plane we'll wait for him to be correctly spaced between the others. So having the two guys stacked on top of each other isn't the best. Um, it's more for, for bringing guys this way. Collecting guys, if that's overloaded, that's always going to be overloaded, whether the two guys are on top of each other or not. But I think just for spacing out the amount of load arriving at any one time, we're better off blowing it down. All right, about there, I would say. There's another Cameroon one coming in. Well, an update as well on what I was looking at last time. I think last time I was talking about how I was looking at a place to potentially travel for a week, and I was reading about Bhutan. So I am trying to refine in where uh, I would travel to, and I, I figured that the, the key things are... I was looking at, say, South uh, Korea for a little bit, but then I decided that that doesn't really make sense because I could easily go to South Korea with my wife and daughter and do basically everything that I would otherwise do in South Korea. If I was going there, I would just be basically to scout it, see what it's like, and get an idea for, for going again with them. So if I've got a, a trip where I'm traveling somewhere on my own for a week, it should be to somewhere that I don't have, I wouldn't foresee myself ever taking my family with me. 
also because it's so short, you wouldn't want to travel too far. So I refined my search to Oceana. First thing that I, I sort of was a bit fascinated by and, and wanted to have a look at was um, Micronesia, which isn't pictured on this map because they're the word micro does live up to its name and those islands are located about here. Um, Micronesia has a weird ruin system called Nan, Nan Medal. It seems to go into the water um, from like the, the 17th century, I think is when it was last used. That seems super interesting. And um, and I had, did see one guy once say it would be a wonder of the world if it was more accessible. Um, so that, that sort of gave a, a little bit of a um, interest. But at the moment, um, COVID numbers are going up in Australia. So Micronesia is currently not allowing Australians in. I can't foresee that this is so soon that that would be a complete deal breaker. But um, that's the only hesitation for that. Otherwise, Micronesia does seem pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, the other ones I was looking at... Like I've said before, I'm going to go to Fiji. Vanuatu, I think, is the easiest option. I think if I just had to book something and go tomorrow, Vanuatu, I can do a direct flight from, I think, Brisbane to, to Vanuatu to, to get that going. So, um, nice and easy, that one. But almost too easy that I, that I do think that that one I could slot in at any time. So if I want to do planning, if I want to have that full enjoyment of trying to investigate places, where would be the best place to go, what, what to do. Um, I think there's three places that, that stand out for me. And all three of them are here. East Timor, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. So I reckon my shortlist is down to these four countries. This is If all else fails, we can just do Vanuatu. What's fascinating about me, uh, the Solomon Islands for me, is that's where the Battle of uh, Guadalcanal took place in World War II. Uh, if anyone's seen the uh, miniseries The Pacific, the first really significant battles in that, that's where they took place. Um, and there are still some... Um, like sort of World War Two things that are about there that you can go go see. There's a I'm not a scuba diver, but apparently if you are a scuba diver, there's a place you can go there where you can go deep dive and have a look at um amongst like crashed World War Two planes and ships, which would be uh pretty neat. But I'm not sure I would go to the effort of, of getting a scuba diving license, which sounds pretty intense uh, to do it. Papua New Guinea, if you wanted to stay on that World War II theme, you could try and hike the um, Kokoda Trail, which, would be, uh, which is a very significant thing to, uh, I think, to Australians probably more than anyone else. Um, and also, like, I've, I have heard that Papua New Guinea can be quite rough, which is, is part of the reason. I don't know about Solomon Islands, about... This, I haven't, don't have a reputation preceding me in the Solomon Islands. I know I've, I've had co-workers before, uh, one who's had a family member that worked in Port Moresby in um, Papua New Guinea, and they said that they basically were allowed at, where they were, at their residence, at the golf course, and at work. And they were basically just driven between those three destinations, and they, they were, I guess, encouraged not to, uh, not to go anywhere else. I mean, East Timor as well, um, I know that they uh, broke away from Indonesia uh, probably, what, like two decades ago now? Um, so they they would certainly probably still be building, finding their feet from, uh, from that period. So, and there's nothing specific about East Timor that I would want, want to do it. Um, that immediately stands out. But you can fly from Darwin to there, so it's a short little trip outside of um, Australia. And so that's currently where I'm, where I'm at. Feel free to play along if you want to investigate about any of the islands around Australia and what looks really neat to do. Probably listen to me talk for a few hours on what I find interesting. So <laughs> if you if you enjoy travel as much as I do and you want something to investigate, it will result in someone going on holiday somewhere. 
play that. That's very, I mean, that doesn't surprise me that there's a city, I guess, all the way up there in, in Cameroon. If Nigeria's got a city this close, then it must be somewhere you can live. I wonder what's going on in this little bit of the map here. That slither of Niger that runs down. I mean, the uh, the Flycorp map is, is very sweepingly vague, so I wonder how, how thin that piece right there is in, on a real map. Have a look. The bounce over to Tiger. Well. According to the map that I'm looking at, let me just go to a... According to the map I'm looking at, Niger and Cameroon do not touch. There is what I would call a hundred kilometers of Chad and Nigeria sharing a border. And Cameroon and Niger aren't involved neither. Not sure why theirs looks so different to what I'm looking at. Unless it's potentially a, a contested border in the um the Russian version of who's winning that fight is, uh, is different to our version. I would have gained another city there, but it looks like that's the case. It's certainly slow going when we can't fast forward in fear of... Oh, have we smoothed back out, have we? Oh, if I zoom out that far, maybe I've got to stay in a little bit. That looks like this guy is struggling. Let's get him some help. Maybe we will slow it down while we look at places that we can assist. So that's heading north, which is this side. So we'll get that guy, just get him upgraded to full jet. Manchester, Paris. So that's that side that's struggling. Keep looking for red. Toronto, Chicago. So that's this side and that tiny little route is somehow Losing a massive battle to this guy here. Santiago is a struggle. It's heading to Los Angeles, which would be this side. So let's upgrade that one. This guy here is also struggling. Same thing. Going to Los Angeles. I guess let's give him a 300 seater. These tiny little routes needing support is definitely a concern. But I mean, a lot of times you can see there's two planes on the route opposite him, so I guess that makes sense. Tucson. Philadelphia and Lima, so that's this side. Now we've got a lot of red here, unsurprising with this little guy stuck in the middle there. Using everyone to, to backlog around him. This guy's doing pretty ordinary too. Only being a 3,000 seater means that there wasn't really that many passengers, so hopefully you can clean that up nice and quick. He's heading to Mexico, which is this way.
Did I get that right about which way this was going to LA? Yeah, it did. Portland over here is struggling. Stuff going to London. It's got minus 300 passengers, so that says to me that we need to do good old fashioned save and load. And I thought I heard another city come in. This one. Those guys. I'm in there. Yeah. Bobo. Jibo. Jibo. Timbuktu. Timbuktu is a ligger accused in Oliver Twist, which I feel like is where I first heard of that. And I think it first heard it mentioned in Oliver Twist, I reckon as a, like an eight year old or so, um, as a place name. And I think as a teenager, so years later, it amazed me to discover that that wasn't an Australian town because that is such an Australian word. So Australian. But it is. Get these guys in the mix. So we'll swing him down, do this one, and then back up. Another guy in here, yep. Getting a bit of red coming in here now too. So let's get that guy and his negative numbers carrying a bit higher. We'll upgrade that guy as well. And understandably, guys are struggling with their longer routes. Not really too much we can do. Again, that's just sort of a long bounce into Algeria where Where are you heading that you're struggling? You're that side of things. Yeah, so now we're gonna have to give um give Europe a bit of love. It's gonna start to show its weak points. I can assume it's gonna be that side of this one. Everyone's headed to Mexico City, it seems. about which side's going to be the one that's struggling. Please, I reckon I could just go straight to give him a fully fledged jet. Don't want to decrease passenger limits because we want to reduce our passengers. So it gives us a chance of that sweet, sweet feeling of not getting overload penalties. Looking at that and the numbers there, I'm suspicious that we might need to do another save load. Let's just that save in, load in. I mean, the other good thing about saving and loading midway through means I'm not going to lose data like I was, I did when in save after my Nigeria build. Paris, so that's our north side. Brussels. There's a lot of people headed for Brussels. Even 
four that are wanting to get out of that one. So I guess if we're upgrading that guy, we should upgrade that plane even further. That's cool, at least, that we're getting a little bit more Marley. Did feel under Marley before. My plan for Marley is definitely coming to fruition that is just sort of attached to the closest guy. There's no efficient way of traveling in Mali. Alright, I'd say I can probably make a decision with these guys. It does also seem like it's satisfied that it's given me all the cities that Cameroon's going to give me. Let's bring in our next country. I think it's going to be... Want it to be Niger? Or do we want to wait for these guys? Oh, sorry. Maybe we'll go with Duo. We'll go Equatorial Guinea. Oh! That's an interesting one. Capital's not even... Okay, so it's going to be very close. But line doesn't get broken there. Closer than what I would normally like. Have a look. Hopefully I've already got a map zoomed into Niger. Where that's sitting there is an island of a bit more significance than, than what that suggests. that that's not its own um, country and this is something different. Must be a story there. I was actually expecting that Equatorial Guinea was only going to give me one city and now surely it's going to give me two, right? It's a, a former Spanish colony. Its independence evokes its name from its location both near the equator and the Gulf of Guinea. I don't know what the Gulf of Guinea is. I assume this is the Gulf of Guinea. Because that's the Gulf that's nearby, right? Let's find out. Yes. This is the Gulf of Guinea. Did anyone know that? I would love to hear. I mean, that's I find that super fascinating that it's the Gulf of Guinea, which is why these guys have gone like, well, that's why we're named Guinea. And Guinea isn't near the Gulf of Guinea. Neither is, was there another Guinea up here? This Guinea. And it is New Guinea. I mean, New Guinea's fine. I'd, I'd be curious to see what the association is of why someone decided that New Guinea reminded them of one of these guineas, or if it's just coincidence that it's got a guinea name. So apparently in the Gulf of Guinea, there is a series of islands that run from Cameroon down this way for a series of volcanic islands that are called the Cameroon Line. The more you know. Alright, let's get back to Guinea. Population as of 2021 was about one and a half million. So it consists of two parts, an insular and mainland region. The insular region consists of the island of 
Yoko in the Gulf of Guinea and Annabon, a small volcanic island place. Small volcanic island which is the only part of the country south of the equator. Yuko Island is the northernmost part of the Equatorial Guinea, which I'm sure we all could have guessed. And this is the, and this is the site of the country's capital. Portuguese-speaking island nation. And it is home to Bada, the uh, largest city in Equatorial Guinea. And the country's planned future capital. Came independence from Spain in 1968. Hmm. The more you know. Well, we've got eight minutes left, so we're going to bring Gabon into this as well. So I don't think that we're going to see any more of Equatorial Guinea. I would guess it's going to sit with just two. Whereas Gabon's coming thick and fast, giving us support as well. Now, I would imagine that this is also it. Gabon gives me a very um, European vibe, very French vibe, I'd say. I would imagine that these guys were so colonized. Libreville. So Philadelphia, so that means that this guy is the struggling part of that, that journey. There's a lot of demand. Well, probably not a lot of demand, there's just terrible supply. <laughs> speeding up. Zoom in far enough, I think it, it copes with it. So let's give it a chance to, to go quicker for us. And while we wait, let's read about Gabon. On the west coast of Africa, located on the equator. Uh, population 2.1 million as of 2018. Not that much bigger than Equatorial Guinea for population. Only a wealthier country though. Originally settled by Pygmy peoples, they were largely replaced and absorbed by Bantu tribes as they migrated. By the 18th century, a Mayani speaking kingdom known as the Kingdom of Orangu formed in Gabon became a powerful trading center, mainly due to its ability. Its ability. Okay. Purchase and sell slaves. Kingdom fell with its demise of the slave trade in the 1870s. Since its independence from France in 1960, nailed it. Sovereign state of Gabon has three pre has had three presidents in the early 1990s. It introduced a multi-party system and the didn't constitution that allowed for a more transparent electoral process and reform many government institutions. Gabon is also known for its masks. Gabon's name originates from Portuguese word for cloak, which is roughly the shape of the estuary of the Como River by Libreville. There you go. Why well, it's called Gabon. Even though I correctly predicted it was French, country is named after a Portuguese word. How about that? 
slow it down again so we can... Now this is a this is a good computer. <laughs> I want to say this is this computer can stream. Uh, I can stream Elden Ring max settings uh, like I did for a video uh, without latency. I can play Half Life Alex high settings VR without delay in the in the syncing of the um, audio and visual, which I was very happy to see since I sort of struggled with that the last time I played it. So this is still a very clunky game for how simple it should be. Now I will concede that I have certainly clunkied up the, the, the amount of thinking that this probably has to go through. Um, what would they keep offering? Telling us to not build first level airports and then just keep getting us to build first level airports? Oh, we're just saying upgrade to level 3. I guess they are starting at level 2. So I wonder, wonder who owns that oh, Angola. I, I do always say I wonder who and then realize if I just hover over it, it'll immediately tell me. I think heading down we'll go Congo, Angola, Na uh, Namibia, then into South Africa and Les Lesotho and Eswati, Eswati Eswatini. Apologies. Uh, and then Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Malawi, Madagascar. And then grab all of these guys going up. And then similar, we'll pull in these guys once they're surrounded by everyone else. Because I think that what we want to do is end up going through all of these to Egypt. And then Egypt can swing through um, the Arabic countries. And then up into Turkey, cross through, to be continued, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what our path should be through this section. Think up. Um, I mean, if, if we could just sort of get all of this and attach it to um, the remainder of Europe, divide parts of Turkey that are on this side to the, that, although that would be a long journey between the two halves of Turkey and it's a pretty big population, so it should deserve um, an assumption that it might actually get a few travelers in there. So, probably we'll have to keep it together. It, it depends on how many cities we get in southern Russia. Which I'd imagine would be a couple. Volgograd is about what? There? I would, I would imagine that with the size of the population of Russia, even though they've got such a big sort of area of land, that a lot of those cities would be in this section. Yeah, the Gabon, we're really just bouncing all over the place for our cities. Put that one in, but it's quite tentative, I would say. I would imagine that surely that's going to get broken at some point by... I don't know if it's just the amount that I'm spending on my cities more, but I feel like I've been sitting on seven point something million dollars per hours that I've never pushed into eight, even though this number constantly trickles up. I mean, it definitely could very be, well be because I am spending uh, half a, a quarter of a million dollars on a each city as they open. slow things down while we've got this much on screen.
Alrighty. Oh, we've got another guy out here. What are we going to do with you? Let's leave him be. Oh, okay. It's funny that I was getting Mali cities while I had Cameroon open as my new one. Now Cameroon's all about getting attention. Alright, let's go. Let's cut that route that I didn't like. Let's cut that route. And we'll go him down. And then we will get this guy to jump up. Then we'll hop across. That's a long flight though. So hopefully we get something more central in Cameroon. All right, there we go. Now those three new countries are certainly looking a little bit spaced. I feel like there's more room for cities. However, I do realize that say, what we are looking at here is a country with 2 million population versus a country with 200 million population. So it wouldn't surprise me that this is how the city layout looks on Gabon. If it's got that much room geographically, versus a country like that and has one one hundredth the population. Maybe there just aren't that many cities sitting around in Gabon. But there we go. Another one down, three more countries off the map as we slowly uh, tick through. These will come a little bit slower at the moment because I've got a whole bunch of um, Train Valley 2 videos to, to get out. Um, still re regularly clip, just a little bit slower, but hopefully um, the guys are still working on, on upgrading these ones and it won't be as jumpy. But any questions or comments, feel free to chuck them below. And until next time, catch you later. Yes.